my name is H.A. Pruitt, and I'm the author of Anathalian and the second book in the Anathalian series, Earthquaking. And in this video, I am going to do a book review, not of Anathalian, of another book, of a sci-fi book. I don't think I've done one of a sci-fi book yet, um, but I'm going to do a sci-fi book. And before I start, I want to say reviews are so important to authors. They spread the word about a book better than any other thing out there. People telling other people, readers telling other readers about the book and recommending it is so much more helpful than an author trying to sell their product um, because it looks like it's somebody just trying to sell their product. But an actual reader telling someone else this was a good book, you should read it, is so helpful to authors. So if you read a book, please do review the book you read. Um, so the book I'm going to review today is The Maven Knight, Heir of Providence by Matthew Romeo. And um, before I jump into the review, I have to tell you a little bit of a background story about um, why I read the third book first. Um, so I had heard so many good things about the Maven Knight on Instagram and social media. Um, and Matthew Romeo does such a great job of promoting the Maven Knight. And I was thinking about buying it, but then I saw he had a giveaway. And so I was like, I'm going to enter the giveaway and see if I win. And that'll be really cool. And then I did win. And I was super excited. And so I got the book in the mail and I had just, I think I had just finished a book and I opened it and I sat down and I started reading it and started looking through it. And I looked through the front matter and I started getting the feeling that this wasn't the first book. But I was like, but this is the Maven Knight and he's always advertising the Maven Knight. And he's always talking about the Maven Knight. But I, I read in the beginning part kind of a summary of what happens before this book. And I was like, this is not the first book, is it? And so I looked it up and it's not the first book. <laughs> I thought it just had a different cover than what I had been seeing. Um, but I already read the part that told you what happened in the first and second book. And so I was in this place where I was like, well, I already know what happens in the first and second book. Should I read the first and second book before I read this one? And so I looked it up online and I thought about it and I'm, <laughs> it came down to the fact that I'm really cheap. And the reason I waited for giveaways and I wait for giveaways for a lot of my books is because I'm just cheap and I'm a starving artist, just like a lot of other authors and I don't have a lot of money to spend on books like I want to. And so I was like, you know what, I'm just going to start it and I'm going to try and see if I can read it, read the third book without having the first two books. And if I can't, then I will go and buy the other ones. But I started reading it and I got to tell you all that just to tell you that I started reading it and I read it all the way through and it totally made sense and I could read it on its own and it was a great book by itself. Like I wouldn't recommend reading the third one first because the first two are probably really good too. But I was really impressed with the fact that he summarized the first two books well enough that I could read the third one and still really enjoy the story and the characters and everything. So read the first one first, do your research, and, and then get to the third one. Um, but my whole experience of The Maven Knight is just from the third one and it's still a good experience. So um, I still give it three stars. And the positives are the descriptions. How um, the author described things was just kind of perfect. He gave you enough that you could really get a sense of this sci-fi world and understand what it looked like and what the people looked like. And like, it was just like a movie rolling in my head through the whole thing. I could really see what was happening and see the characters and understand what was going on. Um, the descriptions were very, very good and I one, it's kind of funny but one of the parts of the book that really stood out to me as really well done was it's from a few different perspectives and there's three different perspectives that encounter the same room at slightly different times and they each get a slightly different look at the room and it just built the picture up more and more and more of what this room looked like and it's just kind of a small thing but just that those details that he put in there, you just feel like these people are real, they observe different things, and then you also see the description coming together make a more and more and more vivid picture. So I loved that he took the time to describe his world. Um, yeah, the descriptions were really good. 
so the next positive was the world building it's a sci-fi world he has his own map it's probably too small for me to show you but he's got his own map in the front that he made and it's of his world i there's probably names i'm going to say that are <laughs> i mispronounced but i think it's pangea um he made his world pangea and he plotted out all the different places and all the different um i think they're called maven temples and just everything and it just felt very real <laughs> like there's this real world out there um, I don't know if it's in space or what, where it's at, but it's really cool, and I enjoyed the world building. Um, and the sci-fi elements in the world building. The sci-fi elements were very sci-fi-like. It felt like a sci-fi book, like technology and all this stuff, but I came in on the third book, and um, I could still, after, I think after like the first two chapters, I completely understood all the sci-fi technology and the things going on. And so, again, he did a really good job of making it cool and interesting and, like, complex, but also very approachable and very understandable. And I really enjoyed that because, like, technology is usually over my head. That's why I don't get too fancy with technology ever. Um, but he made it very approachable to read it. <clears throat> also, I liked the characters a lot. And it took me a little bit to like the characters, I think because I came in on the third book, I didn't have kind of their backgrounds. But it seemed like, every at first it seemed like everybody was this really hard warrior. Um, it's, the in the third book, everybody's kind of in a world, almost worldwide war, kind of going against each other. And so you've got a lot of soldier characters, um, men and women, but they're all, pretty much soldier characters and so everybody just seems like a hard soldier who just is very um, strict and trying to defeat the enemy but then as you read a little more you see a little more and a little more and a little more and I like that the characters weren't um, I like I like it sometimes in other books where characters are so much like their characters um, that they have these wild and big personalities that they're more like characters than realistic people and that's fun in like um fantasy or more like wacky fun books i like that when characters are just kind of crazy and wacky sometimes but in this book it really worked to make the characters very subtly different from each other and bring out their personalities in very subtle ways and make them seem really realistic and like they were people actually participating in a difficult war with difficult decisions um, so I really appreciated how the characters were done. It was very well done. Um, and I won't get too much into the story because it is the third book and you should read the first two first. Um, <laughs> but the story was really intriguing. It was high stakes. It was realistic fails and successes. And I really enjoyed it. I got to one part, um, like I was reading along and it, I was so invested in the story and enjoying it and trying to figure out what's going on that when you f see what's going on, you're like, oh! <gasps> that's what's going on <laughs> and so it just it wraps you up in it it's a really good story to read um and I love big books because you can just like read them for forever and they don't end I like big books and it's a big book um I do have one thing it's not really a negative I just wish it was a little different um some words were repeated like sometimes in successive sentences words would be repeated like one sentence would have one word and then it'd be in the next sentence and the next sentence and that happened occasionally throughout not occasionally but like semi-frequently throughout the book um and some phrases were common enough that they started to sound kind of cliche like the cape was snapping or the snapping cape the cape snapped every time the cape snapped i was like okay the cape is snapping again um and everybody was touching their chin and everyone touches their chin. I never touch my chin, so I found that really odd that everybody in the book touched their chin like five times in a chapter. And um, miasma, that word was just over and over and over. And it's a really cool word, but like I said, there were some things that just repeated enough that you were like, another miasma, we touch our chin again, our cape snaps. Okay, um, so that's my only, the only thing in the whole book that I was like not thoroughly enjoying. Um, so I did give it a five star rating. And I do want to note, um, because just for your information, that there, these two things did not affect my rating, obviously, because it's five stars. 
but um, there were some sexual scenes and there was some language. But I want to tell you that the sexual scenes, it was pretty much like they had sex and then that was the, the only details about it. Or she was naked and that was the only details about it. And the those scenes weren't done to just be like, what do they call it, smutty or whatever. They weren't done for that. They were done for a purpose to show how those relationships were affecting other parts of the problems and other parts of the story. And so the sexual part was very brief and non-descriptive. And then once you had that understanding of the scene, then they moved on to more like conversations and what was going on more like mentally and emotionally than physically. So those didn't bother me. Um, and there was a lot of cursing, but it wasn't included just for effect. These are soldiers. Soldiers curse a lot. They were in high stick situations. And even though I didn't like the cursing, it was very easy in my mind to change it to a different word or read over it because I just, I don't like cursing. And so um, I wanted to change the word, but it was very easy and it, it fit. Um, the cursing and the angry words fit. And so again, I didn't knock the book at all for that because it was just very well done and very realistic. And overall, um, it's just a really epic book that calls us to face the truth and face our fears. I liked those themes in it, that you're, you can't run away from your fears, that you have to face your fears or else they never really go away. Um, and I think that's all I want to say about this book. It is a really good book. Like I said, you should probably read the first two first um, and then get to the third one. I it just wrapped up so well that I didn't feel the need to go back and read the first two, but maybe I will, I'm not sure. But it, it wraps up and it makes you feel really good about the ending, even though it's kind of sad too. No, I'm not gonna tell you about it. Um, this book is good. The aspects are good of it. And I, I really recommend reading it. So now I'm gonna tell you how to find The Maven Knight, the, the series, and how to find Matthew Romeo on social media. You can find all three books of the Maven Knight series on Amazon. You can find out more about the books and Matthew Romeo on his website, themavennight.wixsite.com, at his Instagram, Matthew S. Romero, on his Facebook page, Matthew S. Romero author page, and on Goodreads under Matthew Romeo. So that is how to find the Maven Knight and Matthew Romeo. Um, so you can read the book too. And please, if you read a book, review a book, whether it's The Heir of Providence, the Maven Knight series, whether it's Anathalian or just any other book that you read, please do review books. It is so important for authors in spreading the word about our books. Um, and also, if you like this video, please hit the like, buck let, hit the like button um, and please subscribe to my um, channel, A Chamber at Anathalian. And please leave a comment if you've read the book, what you thought of the book, um, if you have a suggestion for me to read. Um, hopefully uh, it's not too much because I'm cheap. Um, <laughs> so please leave a comment. And um, thank you very much for watching. Bye! If you want to know more about Anathalian or H.A. Pruitt, please follow me on Instagram at H.A. Pruitt. You can find me on Amazon as an Amazon author, H.A. Pruitt. Please watch my YouTube channel and all my cool videos on my channel, H.A. Pruitt Anathalian. You can find me on the Facebook page, H.A. Pruitt Anathalian. You can follow me on Goodreads by the name H.A. Pruitt and the book Anathalian. Or you can go to my website where so much cool stuff about Anathalian is. The website is hapruitt.com. I'm not even going to be able to read if I take them off. And I got a lot to read. No cool outfit because I'm pregnant and nothing fits me but like two shirts. Sorry. I really wanted to do a cool outfit but I couldn't. Okay.